Welcome everyone. In today's Rocket Blocks mini lesson, we're going to identify four common mistakes that candidates make when going through case interviews and talk about what you should be doing instead. My name is Kendrick Kavescu. I'm an ex BCG consultant, an ex Googler, and the founder of Rocket Blocks, an online platform that helps candidates prepare for interviews. So let's go ahead, let's jump in, let's identify these four super common mistakes and talk about what you should be doing instead so you can nail your case interviews. Okay, the first mistake that candidates often make is they waste a bunch of time in the early part of the interview confirming all of the details from the case prompt. If you're not familiar what a typical case prompt looks like, we're going to throw one up here. Just take a pause on the video and read through that. But there's a lot of context, there's details, there's numbers, things like that. Now, of course, if when that prompt is given to you, read to you, you haven't heard a number or weren't sure you heard a particular detail correctly, of course you should confirm that. But Barring that, there's no reason to spend a bunch of time confirming every single detail from that particular case. What you want to do instead is actually ask clarifying and probing questions that are going to further your understanding based off what you've heard already. That will give you more detail, more information that is going to help you set up a successful structure and a framework through walking through that question. And in case interviews, time is money, so don't waste time confirming details that you already have. Okay, mistake number two is asking an interviewer how you're doing during the actual case itself or, or at any point during the course of the interviewer. It really puts the interviewer on the spot and it's probably not going to yield any productive information, especially if you happen to be bombing the case or going the wrong direction at the time. Now, what you can do instead is if you're walking through a case and you're having doubts that you are structuring it the right way or that you're going through an analysis per a particular way, rather than just asking blindly, like, how do you think I'm doing? Take a pause and voice over to the interviewer if you're going to change direction. You know, hey, I'm thinking that the way I've been approaching this is slightly incorrect. So I'd like to regroup and actually approach it this way. That actually shows a lot of good problem solving skills and that you're thinking about your approach as you've gotten further into it, you've decided it's incorrect and you're going to pivot and approach it this way. That's something that can actually turn a negative into a positive in a case if you happen to get lost, but then sort of regroup, communicate to the interviewer what you're doing and change tax a little bit. Okay, mistake number three is regurgitating memorized frameworks no matter what case question comes up. When candidates get into this process, the whole case solving process starts to feel very mechanical, just like they're repeating something that they memorized that come off sort of like robotic, like a case robot. And that's not a good look. And it's not what the interviewers want to see. They really want to see that you're listening to the particular case question that they've put forward and that you're thinking about that unique question and designing and proposing a structure to walk through that, which addresses it, is an easy, and is tailored to the specific question at hand. Now, as you are getting into case interview practice and starting off, in the beginning, it's okay to use some of those starting frameworks, like a profitability framework, market entry framework, et cetera, to sort of kickstart your process. But as you start getting better at building frameworks on the fly, you want to make sure you're really tailoring and customizing them so you're setting yourself apart from your competition. Okay, the fourth and final common mistake candidates make is that they forget to structure their thoughts throughout the course of the interview. Of course, at the beginning of the interview, when you get the initial case prompt, you're gonna propose a structure for walking through how to solve this case. But it doesn't mean that the only time you need to really structure your thoughts and communicate in a structured manner is at the beginning of the case. You want to be structured throughout the case at every single point. For example, in the conclusion, when you say, hey, I think the client should do X, and the three key reasons are one, two, three. That's a structured way of communicating. When you are brainstorming during the case, you may want to structure your brainstorm versus just being sort of like completely loosey-goosey. So you might say, hey, like if we're going to generate new revenue, we should think about how we could generate revenue from existing products and new products that we can create. And then let's brainstorm some existing product revenue ideas here. Now let's think about some new product revenue generating ideas we could do. And boom, boom, boom. 
everywhere in the case, you want to think about how you can be structured in your communication so that it's clear and understandable. It's not just something you do at the beginning of the case. Okay, that's a wrap on our four common case interview mistakes. If you enjoyed that video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. You'll get all of our content as soon as it comes out on a weekly basis. Thanks for watching and have a great day.